Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we have a very fun and festive video for you. Today we are celebrating Christmas with my team and I have everyone coming to my home for an early celebration. So I'm gonna share with you behind the scenes all the styling tips and how I've made the house look super Christmassy. And I'm also gonna share behind the scenes on our Christmas party. So I hope you'll join us. Tree number one is my formal sitting room. We actually have, I'm embarrassed to say this, six trees in the house. It's not just me that's obsessed with Christmas, but my daughter Ava is as well, and every year she pushes us to get more trees. So this is the first tree we decorated this year, and I like to go for a different theme in every room. I would say that the theme of this tree is all out glamour. I've also got some blue and white influences that carry through from the blue and white chinoiserie vases on the fireplace. And I think it's really fun to draw influences from the room onto your tree so it all ties together. So guys, I just want to explain, I am always having stuff done at the house and right now I'm having our guttering change, which sounds really boring, but I'm actually really excited about it because it's going to look gorgeous. Um, but if you can hear some drilling noise in the background, I apologise, that's what that is. But anyway, ignore the noise and come on in. I'm going to show you a few of the details of the tree and explain some of my styling tips about how I dress the tree in my house. So first of all, all my trees are from Balsam Hill. This is not an advert for Balsam Hill. I've been buying them for years. I only buy one of their models, which is called the Nordman Fair. And I've gone for various different sizes. I do believe this is the nine foot tall tree. When it comes to sizing your trees, you can see I've left about 20 centimeters from the top of my ceiling, which is what I would recommend. Measure your ceiling height and leave about 20 centimetres because otherwise, even if you can just squeeze it in, it's not gonna look proportionate to the room. I made that mistake. I got a 10 foot one before in my kitchen and it just jarred on my eye. Um, and the other thing that will allow that will allow you to do is then you can put a star or whatever it is that you wanna put at the top of your tree, you've got a bit of space to work with. I always go for the pre-lit trees. I don't know if you're doing as many trees as I do and we do them not only for my home, but also for clients and for photo shoots. You don't want to be messing around with loads of cables of lights. Life is too short. Get the pre-lit tree. Was there ever a point where you ever used a real tree so? I used a real tree once, never again. Um, we have underfloor heating and it literally like dropped all its needles on day four. Um, and I was just like hoovering every day. And as far as I'm concerned, that's not how I like to spend my Christmas. So for me, it's faux. And I think the thing is, if you're gonna go for a faux Christmas tree, go for the best quality that you can afford because faux Christmas trees can be environmentally friendly as long as you use them long term. And this particular one, I think I've had this about 10 years and it comes out every year. I don't have to worry about getting a new tree, getting rid of it. I'm committed, like this is the perfect tree for me. It's held its quality and its shape really well and I'm going to have it for life. So always go for the best one that you can. I would just like to talk to you a little bit about our sponsor of this video, Lily Silk. Lily Silk do some gorgeous silk cashmere items and I'm actually wearing one of their shirts right now. 
I chose this from their website because I absolutely love the colour. It does feel very festive and it's got some really lovely details like the frills on the sleeves and I love this little necktie as well just for that added little bit of glamour. And I think it would make a brilliant Christmas present so Mr P if you're watching you know what to get me. I would love this shirt in some more colours. And I'm also going to show some of the cashmere jumpers that I chose from their website. Again, that's one of my go-to outfits when I'm having to jump from work to maybe socialising with clients or going out. I like an outfit that can work really hard and you can dress it up with some earrings, um, but then equally dress it down to go to site. So I've chosen three cashmere roll neck jumpers that are just perfect for this time of the year and that I think would make a great gift as well. My approach to um, decorating my trees is that I like to just add every year. So some of these decorations I've had for absolutely years. Um, and then other ones like this one, for, for example, this is one of my favorite ones. I got this one on Etsy. And what I love about this is that it's got the blue and white Shinrazeri painted detail, which ties in really nicely with the vases on my fireplace. So it feels very appropriate. But I also love the fact that this has been personalised, so we have an O for Oscar, an A for Ava, somewhere we have a K for my husband, and S for me. And the other nice thing about these is that it's got a little tag that says the year, so this is 2019. And what I love about that is that as I'm decorating the tree with my family, you can kind of look back and be like, oh, that was the year that Oscar was born, and it just triggers all these other happy memories. So I like my decorations to look nice, but I also like them to have meaning. What's your uh, favourite part about this time of year? It's just such a magical time of the year, and I actually was talking to my husband about this the other day, and I think Christmas can actually be quite a sad time of the year for some people. I think it puts a lot of pressure on you that you feel like you've got to make the perfect Christmas, have the perfect family, and it just makes me feel so lucky that, for me, Christmas is a really happy, magical time. It's all about children and I just love making it as magical as possible for Ava and Oscar. Um, every year I push myself a little bit more to see what I can do to make it more magical, but I know that they love all these elements as well. Like Ava loves decorating, sorry, there's the drilling again. Ava loves decorating the tree. Every year we have playful arguments, me and Ava, about how to decorate the tree. Last year, it was the one in my husband's study. She did not like the fez and feathers. Um, but eventually um, she came round she saw that they were good. Um, and then this year in the kitchen, I'll show you, there was a little bit of a discussion about how we arrange the ornaments. But I, what I would say is that she is really, really good at it. She actually did the bottom half of this one by herself and um, my husband just did the top. Um, so she knows how to space them out. And I've also this year let her have her own tree in her bedroom which I hope she never watches this, but is a complete disaster. It gives me a nervous tick in my eye every time I see it. I let her pick all her own decorations. There is no theme, no colour coordination. Um, it's a walking disaster, but I'm like determined not to rearrange that tree because I do not want to suppress her or sort of damage her confidence. Every time I walk in, I just tell her how wonderful it is. And, um, I hope that we can sort of evolve that tree over time, but for this year I can live with how it is. <laughs> Where would you recommend buying Christmas ornaments from? I tend to buy them from all over, high and low. This particular ornament I picked up last week when I was in London with Ava, it's from Harrods. She absolutely loves Harrods, she's, she's obsessed with the teddies in there. So I thought I'd definitely buy this because it would remind me of that lovely day out that we had. Um, but then equally, I've got a lot from um, Balsam Hill, I've sent some. Some of them are from John Lewis, who's another great supplier. Some of them have been gifted, so this one is from Lock Lomond. And then of course, um, online retailers like Etsy, I think are absolutely brilliant um, for some really unique um, ones, and it's nice to support small businesses. These ones are from Mrs. Alice, which is a relatively new brand, which I absolutely love, and I'll share some other decor that I bought from her as well. I um, absolutely love those little chinoiserie vases. Something that's really important to remember if you are going for a faux tree is to hide the base, um, because they come with these metal um, bases that are quite ugly. 
So this one is a basket that I bought from John Lewis a couple of years ago. And I just think that's a really nice finishing touch. If you've got all those baubles on the tree, you don't want to forget the base. I don't know if it was her first Christmas or her second Christmas. I think it must have been her second, thinking back. I've got a really cute video and I hope I can find it. If I can, I'll share it with you. Um, she, we woke her up in the morning and obviously we told her that Father Christmas had been. We'd left some carrots out for Rudolph and I think a glass of champagne for Father Christmas, which he'd enjoyed very much. And she came downstairs and she just looked at the tree and she went, and it was just the most magical moment that, like, for the first time ever, she was really sort of experiencing Christmas and seeing the magic of that. Another one of my favourite Christmas styling items is these stockings, which I do fill with chocolates and treats just before Christmas, but I wouldn't put them in at this point because I have the fire on quite a lot and they'd probably melt and make a big mess. Um, but these are some lovely linen Christmas stockings that I bought from Etsy and I'll share the link in the description box. Um, but I just think they're so cute and they can be personalised with everyone's names. I've actually got some extra ones for all the other family members that are coming this year. When you're um, wanting to hang them on your mantelpiece, you can just buy these little um, stocking holders. I think I got these on Amazon. They're quite good as well, actually. If you've got a nice handbag, you should put one in your handbag so you never have to put it on the floor. Um, but they just hook over onto this, stocking this way, and then the weight keeps them onto the mantelpiece. And then to help them keep their shape, this is not very glamorous, but I've stuffed them with toilet roll just so they're nice and puffy, and they don't just sag like a pair of tights. So this is the second tree in our house. This is my husband's study and you can see we've gone for a lot more traditional theme in here. Um, it's got this lovely red colour accent and then lots of um, very natural elements like the feathers and some really traditional motifs um, like the piper because he's Scottish so again it feels relevant to him. Um, and then I've also got some playful ones like the little Christmas robin. In here we've gone for a slightly shorter tree just because he's a little bit tighter for space. So remember, as you go taller, the tree will also get wider. And the one thing I would say about the faux trees, the Nordman firs, they're my favourite models, but they are quite a wide tree. So be aware of that because you need quite a big surface area on the floor um, to fit them in. Um, but in this room, I really just wanted to go all out traditional, make it very sort of British, and Scottish. Um, you've got some of these pheasant feathers, um, which I just got, I can't even remember where I got, I think I might have got them online. Some little candy canes, so cute. That's from my local garden centre. Um, some little tweed birds. These ones just clip onto the branches. How cute are they? I think they might be from John Lewis. I've got a terrible memory. And then a little pheasant um, a little feather wreath, some pheasants. What were your memories of your first Christmas with Gab? Um, one of my, the very first Christmas that I spent the day with him, when we first got together, we still used to spend Christmas with our respective families, was I went to their townhouse in Edinburgh and his mum and dad are just so good at making a beautiful home and making an amazing party atmosphere. So they'd had the whole house decorated and they actually celebrated Christmas differently to how my family did. We would open our Christmas presents on Christmas day, whereas they would open them all on Christmas Eve, which was actually really fun because we went out for a big meal, had a few drinks, and then we all went back to the house and opened some presents. And I remember he bought me um, a belt and I was very, he says I was very easy to please back then, I'm not so sure I am now. But that year he bought me a Gucci belt and I burst into tears. I was like so touched and just, it was just such a magical uh, moment being with him and his family for the first time ever. Um, so they always take the mickey out of me that I used to burst into tears over a belt, but it's a bit harder to make me cry these days. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I like to do that doesn't cost a lot of money is get some wired ribbon and it has to be wired so it holds its structure and then I've done a little bow at the top and then that cascades all the way down the tree and it's just a really nice way of injecting more colour onto your tree. Mm. 
So now I've had a little outfit change, I'm going to show you the third tree, which is the one in our kitchen. And I've gone for a much more sort of natural theme in here. It's got quite a woodland feel with some of these dried oranges that I've got. This cute little owl that Oscar absolutely loves. He thinks it's the owl from the Gruffalo. Some pine cones. And then these little bows. I actually made these myself, much in the same way in the study that I have the ribbon that wraps around that's in red. These are just some wired ribbon that I got from Amazon. I've tied them into little bows. And then you can just rest them on the branch and they look really effective. Everything in here is quite playful. Um, I've even got some little tigers, which aren't quite woodland themed, but the colour works really well with some of these warmer wood tones that I've got in the room. So this little area down here is where me and Ava had a disagreement, um, but as creative director, I was informed that I was just her tree assistant and was not to rearrange these um, little ornaments. These are all her favourites, the tree and the sheep from Bamford, this little owl that we got from the garden centre, and this cuddly reindeer, which I think is from John Lewis. Because these are her four favourites, she wants them all in a row at the bottom. And I tried to suggest perhaps we should disperse them a little bit on the tree. And then I might have sneakily rearranged them just very slightly um, when she left. Um, but she clocked it straight away. As soon as she came back in the room, she was like, Mum, put them back. Some of the more sentimental ones that I've got in here are ones that we've got that have been personalised. This one says Ava's first Christmas 2016, which was the year she was born. So that's obviously really special. And then just one last decoration I want to highlight. This is from the same brand where we got the ones in the study and they're all handmade, absolutely beautiful. And I just love this one. It's um, a little fox. And again, Oscar loves that one because there's a fox in the Gruffalo, which is his favourite programme and he always tells me it's silly old fox. <laughs> so we've saved the best tree till last. Come on in and see Ava's masterpiece, her tree. She's done it all by herself, um, chosen every single element, these beautiful fairies. You can see there's very cohesive scheme going on, even got some very SPI approved tinsel. Um, but really this tree is just about allowing her to express herself and she's absolutely loved doing it all by herself. It's a really nice little size and I've, I think it's such a nice idea to have a tree in their bedrooms that they can just completely have creative control over. Um, so this is Ava's tree. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed seeing behind the scenes at our SPI Christmas party. And I've absolutely loved sharing my Christmas styling tips with you. So if you're enjoying these videos, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.